this video, we will look at how significant the values of our numbers are and how the number of digits in the number determines its precision and accuracy. Consider that you are measuring a length with a tape measure. The tape measure has large scales of centimetres and small scales of millimetres. You read the tape measure to be 8 centimetres plus 1 millimetre. How do you express your answer? Is it 8 centimetres? Or 8.1 centimetres? Or even 8.10 centimetres? Which one do you think is the most accurate number? If you picked 8.10 centimetres, it may be because you believe that the more digits there are, the more accurate the number is. This leads us to the topic of precision and significant figures. It should be noted that precision is technically not the same as accuracy. Precision refers to the resolution and repeatability of a measurement for a given instrument, whereas accuracy is how closely the measurement represents the true value. Consider the following two rulers. Which of the two rulers is more precise? Ruler A is more precise because the smallest increment in its ruling is 1 mm, whereas ruler B has the smallest increment of only 5 mm. So ruler A can measure more precisely a smaller change in length than ruler B. Now considering measuring a length of string using both rulers. Both rulers will read 2 cm. But using ruler A, we can reliably say that the measured string length is precise to within 1 mm. If both rulers, however, were manufactured with a tolerance or error of 20%, as an example, then while ruler A is precise to 1 mm, the accuracy of the length is 20% of 2 cm, or in other words, the accuracy is to 4 mm. Thus the measurement is only accurate to plus minus 4 mm of the true value of the length, even though our ruler is precise to 1 mm. The number of reliably known digits in a number is called the number of significant figures. There are three simple rules for determining how many numbers are significant. The first rule is that all non-zero digits are significant. Non-zero digits are digits between 1 and 9 and exclude the digit 0. Take the following number for example. It has three significant figures because all of the digits in the number, which are 4, 2 and 5, are all non-zero. The second rule is that any zeros between significant numbers are significant. The following number has four significant figures, even though there are only three digits that are non-zero as per rule 1. However, the zero between the digits 4 and 2 is significant because it tells us something about the size of the number. It is a placeholder for the hundreds place. If that zero wasn't there, we wouldn't know that the 4 represents 4,000. So, a zero between two non-zero digits is considered to be significant. On the other hand, the zero in this number is not needed in order to describe the size of the number. In this case, the leading zero is not significant because it doesn't add to the value of the number. The third rule is that trailing zeros in the number are significant if the precision of the measurement requires it. Take the following number for example, 425.0. We know that this number is 425 in size. Having the zero after the decimal point does not change the size of the number. However, that number may be precise to one decimal place and the zero is a placeholder for that decimal place. This means that this number is precise to one decimal place. Whereas, if we drop the trailing zero, then the number is only precise to one unit place. Here are the two numbers together, so that the significance of the zero is more obvious. One can see now that the number with a trailing zero is more precise, even though 
both numbers are the same size. Going back to our first exercise, given your understanding now of precision and accuracy, how many significant figures should your answer now be written in a way that most reliably represents the length?